I think that now we are probably at the top of the bottom third in terms of all the people offering administration. I saw a report the other day that actually put us as number 18, um, which was interesting. I think probably a little flattering. We are definitely one of the top of the independents. Um, and by independent, I mean companies that are not associated with a major financial institution like HSBC or, or Northern Trust or whatever. Um, and I'm counting Sitco as being a major financial institution just on the basis that they have 400 billion or whatever it is. Um, when we have finished our merger, subject regulatory approval as we speak, um, with Equity Trust, which I hope the, or the fund services side, we will then be approximately 50 billion assets under administration, which puts us in a totally new plateau. It'll be an institutional level plateau, um, and probably will be one of the largest independents, or if not the largest independent. Probably we'll still have our own market because um, the major institutional administrators that have bought the entrepreneurial hedge fund administrator has uh, decided that they want to limit themselves to th maybe 200 million at the very least um, or funds of larger than that. We're happy and delighted to take funds of 100 million to 200 million and 70% of the world's funds are still hedge funds, are still less than 200 million. And what's the smallest managers you um, will take these days? Well, um, I mean we'll take a manager with very small amount, not, not something that's obviously you know, bankrupting, but the, the, the size of the administrator, of, of the, the manager, is determined really by the cost of administration. We have a minimum fee level, and if they have a million dollars, our minimum fee level is crippling. Now, what is, to make it economic for them, what would they have to have in assets under management? Well, to make it non-crippling, probably about a minimum of 10 million, to make right. it economic, something over 20. And most people are now starting up with 2025. 20, what used to be mom and pop businesses would start with you know, half a million or a million, and now 10 or 15 million, still friends and family. Because the family's got bigger. Chicago? Um, it's less expensive than New York. Uh, I'll probably get slaughtered by friends in New York for saying that most people in New York actually don't think there's any other business outside New York than in New York. Um, it is apparent to me, anyway, that if you have a hedge fund association in the Midwest, in Milwaukee, in Atlanta, and in Houston, it's likely there are some hedge funds around there. And you have Chicago, which has got a huge futures business, and therefore you've got a potential for CTA business, and other hedge fund managers. I like Chicago. As I said, it's cheaper. I think that the Midwest ethic is a, is a fact. And if you support people in the Midwest, they'll tend to support you. And I joke, but it's not entirely a joke, that in New York, you're allowed to lose your top staff to hedge fund managers. In Chicago, they'll say, please, first. Um, <laughs> I like Chicago. <laughs> and the other major point is it's one hour nearer the West Coast mm. and one hour nearer Asia. Yeah. And that made a lot of difference. We chose Singapore because the three choices in Asia were, or in Southeast Asia, were Sydney, marvellous place to work, expensive and too far from everywhere. Looked at Hong Kong. Hong Kong is the logical place to go because that was, certainly four years ago, the central point of hedge funds in Southeast Asia, but it was expensive. And I took the view, having spoken to quite a lot of people, that, that Singapore was probably politically more stable. Um, you have no idea, and still you have no idea, what the Chinese might do if they decide they don't want any offshore entities. They won't sit down and have a vote or discuss it in Parliament. They just won't have any offshore entities. Um, in Singapore, you've got the history of Malaysia hanging over them, but I don't think you're going to get that again. You had it ten years ago, there was a rumble, but I don't think you'll get that again. Um, the Singapore government is pro the business. The Hong Kong government is not anti, but they just don't really care. Uh, well, that's the impression I got. They're certainly not supportive. Um, yes, we will be. We, in the reorganization of um, Custom House Global Fund Services, the holding company that owned the Custom House companies before um, has now been moved from the BVI to Malta. 
and it has been established as the holding company of the group, which will include all the fund service, equity fund service companies, um, which includes um, Luxembourg, Netherlands, um, Curacao, etc. And it will include customers Dublin and Singapore and, and Chicago. Um, it will also be a recognised administrator and um, will be registered to do other um, fund services businesses. So we'll have a Maltese office, which will be new and will not be huge when it starts, but will grow. And the other thing, of course, is that we are going to have a Luxembourg one, which we are acquiring anyway. Um, as yet, I don't have any, you know, I don't envisage opening up anywhere else. I'm not planning to rush off to Toronto or right. Dubai. It appears from everything that's, that you read, of the reports I've read anyway, that institutions and um, that the institutional investor is putting more money into um, hedge funds post the, the financial collapse. I mean, every 10 years or so you have a sector of the market that blows up. The tech bubble suddenly, um, after you've, you've had the inevitable quasi hedge fund, which in fact was a long only fund or hedge fund that was a quasi long only fund, um, following a sector like the tech bubble or financials, um, once they've got out of the way, when, when you get a bubble bursting, then you get left with hedge funds that are making money or, or at least preserving capital. And that's a major achievement. And they've done quite well. We've heard of ones that have gone under because they had credit problems. But you know, every so often, different sectors of the hedge fund market do have problems, and that's inevitable. And you know, I sometimes think that our business is like a hedge fund because we have currently 360, 370 funds of different strategies. And if suddenly merger arbitrage goes out, out of the window and nobody wants it, okay, we're suddenly not making any money in that sector. But carbon comes in, or green funds, or Sharia funds, and so we pick it up on another side. And we have a diversified portfolio. I don't think uh, that hedge funds are going to contract. One caveat on that, um, which has only come up very recently, but we, which does, I think, is a, that tiny little cloud over the, the blue sky right off in the distance, is the attitude of the SEC and the FSA to short selling. Now, they restricted their everything at the moment, restricted their restrictions, if you like, to certain financial companies that are either going for rights issues or received support from the Fed. But once that that becomes acceptable as a manner of regulating the industry, it, I fear that in, in due course they could end up by going totally anti-short. And if they go totally anti-short selling, they're going totally anti-hedge funds. Now, the hedge funds may get round that by saying, OK, we will now, and the, the markets, I think, will get around it, by introducing thousands of single-stop futures contracts. And they won't be allowed to stop them getting short there. But, you know, regulators are just as um, creative as, as hedge fund managers. So that's the only thing I can see going down. I think the hedge fund market's going to grow. I think that institutions have already shown that they're probably going to go from 5 to 10% to... 10 to 12 percent or 10 to 15 percent. We will undoubtedly get more institutional business, I think, because we are big enough that they will feel comfortable. We have an advantage, I keep, I keep mentioning earlier about the fact that we're independent, we have an advantage that quite a few managers um, won't, don't like the idea that that their money is being managed by a subsidiary or an associate company. And if you've got Big Bank number one, who has Big Bank trading arm number two, and Big Bank um, administration company, and you go and give your business to Big Bank administration company, there is a fear that somebody will know what's going on. And that is worrying. Five years? I think we should be north of 100 billion at the end of next year. I would be disappointed if at the end of 2010 we worked close to 200 billion. Um, still independent. Um, if ever we become non-independent, I don't think I'm going to worry because I won't be there.